Mmm, Marcus Conti reporting. Ah, beautiful spring day in New York. Verrazano Bridge narrows, the narrows crossing. Mm. How's everybody doing today? And I mean that, you know, some people say, hey, how you doing? Right? And they don't really mean it, but I, I actually mean that. I mean, like, how y'all doing? How you doing? <laughs> I'm doing okay. So I want to talk about, you know, so we got another few days in exile. Thank you all for supporting Marcus Conti 2. And uh, we'll be back on the, uh, hopefully be back on the main channel by Monday. Talk about censorship in a little bit, but I want to, I want to, I want to dive into the Mueller report. I know everybody's talking about it, but it is historical news. It is big. It is a big event. Probably the biggest story in, uh, you know, that the that the for two years, the Democratic Party and the mainstream media have tried to have tried to frame the president of the United States as a Russian spy. And and not only, I mean, they claim non-bias and, and impartiality, but they actually seem to find joy in it. Like, this is what they wanted to find out. Right? They wanted to, they wanted to, that was, that would have been a successful Mueller campaign, right? That Mueller, that, that Trump colluded with the Russians. Wow, we got him. Right? But what does it say? What does it say about national security in the country? What does it say about the people that are striving for that outcome? Right? Not much. It says that they're 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 more interested in their own gain and their own political agenda and their own careerism than the stability of the country, the well-being of the country, the safety of the country. But it all turns out to be a lie anyway, and we already knew that. I mean, how is it that a guy walking around with a joystick, <laughs> you know, uh, and talking to himself into a camera, for over two years knew every, knew it, got it perfectly right, got it 100% that the Russians had absolutely nothing to do with Trump Russia, Trump collusion, that there was there was nothing there was nothing there, there never was anything there. How is it that myself and other people watching and other commentators got a one hundred percent right? And all the all the, the the seventeen the seventeen agencies, the the intel agencies, the FBI, the CIA, the NSA, and they all got it wrong. All of Congress. Adam Schiff and the rest of those characters, they all got it wrong and still refused to fess up. Right? How is that? How is that possible? Because one is grounded in the truth, us, me, you, and the rest are grounded in political propaganda, poli political careerism. But listen, the, the Mueller report, let's just, I just want to talk about it, keep this brief, right? Mueller report, William Barr said that the, on April, uh, mid-April, we should expect a, a fully, a fully released, all 400 pages of the Mueller report with redactions, and it'll be released to the people and Congress at the same time. <laughs> and President Trump has forfeited his executive privilege to see it first. Noble of him. He believes in Barr. He believes in the American people. Great. So we all get to, at least that's what he's saying. So we all get to see it at the same time. Now Congress wants to see it early and they want to see the unredacted part of it because they want to claim higher ground. So no, no, we saw stuff that you didn't see. So now there's collusion and they keep the lie alive. See, William Barr, the best thing that he can do is release the redacted version, if that's necessary. And, I mean, we got to believe that there is to protect some innocent people. Or maybe not, I don't know. But whatever, whatever Barr decides to release, 
right? And he releases it simultaneously to Congress, to the president, and to the people all at once. That's fair because no one, no one entity can spin it. It's a great idea, right? Because no one entity can, call, can claim higher ground. Oh, no, we have, we have privy information, right? And then get Barr in there and get him in Congress, and he's going to say, I can't answer this and I can't answer that. Get Mueller in there, I can't answer this, I can't answer that, right? But that's, that's not the real point. The real point of the Mueller... See, that what, what, what is true is that Russia, the government, Putin, right, and high officials in Russian government had absolutely nothing to do with collusion or interference in an election. That was the Democratic Party getting caught cheat getting caught caught cheating in 2016 Bernie Sanders Hillary Clinton they got caught right the DNC servers you know the evidence was there and the evidence was never evaluated by the proper authorities FBI CIA in fact a company called CrowdStrike an outside firm hired by the DNC came in and wiped the servers and confused the issue, basically damaging any credible evidence forever. Right? So any credible evidence that the... What it, the point I'm trying to make is that the, Russia, the, the Mueller investigation was supposed to prove two things. It was supposed to... It was actually just supposed to look at did Trump collude with the Russians? No evidence, that's off the table. The other one is, is, is what Mueller is still saying is that the DNC, in fact, was hacked. The word hack. And there just simply is no evidence to suggest that. Experts in the NSA have said that it was a, a leak, a dump via hard drive, right? That no Russian entity has ever been held accountable for that. No evidence, no credible evidence has ever been presented to prove that. But all the evidence suggests that it was an inside dump, right? Because if it was a dump, then it can't be Russian agents because then that would have implicated the DNC hiring, you know, hiring fucking, I don't know, hostile people. But the bottom line, what I'm trying to say is that the, that the Mueller report what I'll be looking at, and I hope you'll be looking at it too, is what evidence did Mueller come up with? What did he lean on to suggest that the Russians hacked the DNC servers and thereby swung an election? Now, Podesta's emails and Hillary Clinton's emails and all that information that leaked out into the public did have an effect on the election. There's no doubt about it. When that shit hit WikiLeaks, and WikiLeaks was leaking it out, that was significant, especially to the 40 million Bernie Sanders people that got robbed. They turned away from Hillary Clinton and never looked back. They turned away from the Democratic Party and never looked back. And that's true, and that is that did have an effect. But there's no evidence that Russia did that. And even if it, like, even if it did, it's the power of what was revealed that the public record, what should have been public record, was seen by the public, that the Democratic Party cheated, right? That's what we should be looking at to see what evidence did Robert Mueller, Robert Mueller use to confirm that the DNC was in fact hacked. And that there was no leak. That 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 it, it's that Julian Assange is a puppet of the Russians. Where did he get this evidence? And where is Julian Assange now? Julian Assange is a what what they've they've amounted, you know, as a political prisoner. He's locked up in a nine by six room in Ecuador Embassy in London. Still there. Still silent. Where is Seth Rich? The leak. The DNC fraud lawsuit, the evidence that 
that the DNC cheated. Right? It all leads to it all leads to deep corruption within the Democratic Party. And that Mueller is in fact lying or fabricating evidence when he says that the DNC servers were hacked by Russians. It's simply not the case. There is no evidence to suggest it. And you could call me a conspiracy theorist. I guess that's what we all... Now, if you don't believe the official narrative, you're censored. Well, there is no evidence to suggest it. And there never was. One other thing, um, article, I just want to touch on this, article 13 and article 11. The EU has passed this, um, this bullshit about censoring the internet using upload, upload filters to filter out information that violates copyrights. We got to look at this very carefully. I'll, I'll talk more about it in, in the future. But right now, Europe, the European countries have two years to abide to a copyright filter uploading device to filter out copyrighted information it's especially it's it's basically a rights grab big tech loves it because they they're in control again they could they could say what is what you're allowed to upload and what you're not allowed to upload and that's where they win they want control i mean i i can envision a time where people are starting to move off of the social media platforms and google and such and having independent servers Pri everybody has a dedicated private server or maybe a hundred you know great minds get together and and do something like that have their own server with their own platform that's untouchable or at least off the grid you know so so in conclusion the I just wanted to say in this video that the Mueller report is only half right is only half true the truth about Trump having absolutely nothing to do with anything Russia in terms of manipulating an election, whether he did business there or has a hotel there, who cares? It doesn't matter. Right? But did he, is he a Russian spy? No, it's ridiculous. And it always was ridiculous. But the mainstream media is still, is still gonna, is still gonna perpetrate that lie. Right? and twist the meanings of the law to their favor. So, again, Robert Mueller report is half true. The half truth is that Trump had nothing to do with, with any election rigging whatsoever in terms of Russia. And the part that isn't true is that the Russians hacked the, Demo the Democratic Party servers and released those that information to WikiLeaks, thereby blaming Russia for swinging an election. See, that's the tie-in. They can say officially right now that if true, if the Russians did hack the DNC, then Russia had something to do with swinging an election, and we should be grateful that they did, because we would have gotten a very corrupt Hillary Clinton and Democratic, you know, money grabbers in place, right? So... So that's what we need to see in the weeks that are coming. Now, the, the, the Congress is going to recess on April 12. <laughs> and and uh, William Barr is going to release the Mueller report in mid-April when they're on recess. See, it's all beautiful. Come out of vacation. Right? The, you know, all Democrats and Republicans, all the House and Senate are going to be in recess. And the Mueller report is going hit to the, hit the White House and it's going to hit the public. Right? While Congress is in, in, in recess. Right? See, that's an equal playing field. William Barr should get, you know, a hundred, you know, hundred bright little stars for that. For releasing a redacted version, an equally redacted version to all parties. The people, Congress, and the President all at once. So that we could all see it, we could all sift through it, and we could all come to our own our own opinion and we've all seen everything we've all seen the same amount of information 
Because if you give Congress even one little extra page, that's the page they'll say, no, 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 we have the higher ground. We got it right here and you can't see it. Mueller is found collusion. And, and that's it. Because right? that's what they'll do. So uh, we'll see you. We'll see you Monday, I guess. Maybe a little short video tomorrow, but we'll. I'll see you hopefully Monday back on the uh, back on the main channel. Marcus Conti reporting.